All right, I think we can start. So welcome everyone to this week's Autonomy Talk. This week is a great pleasure to have uh, Kim Waberzich. Uh, Kim is a PhD student at our institute, at the Institute for Dynamic Systems and Control, and he's working with Professor Melanie Zeilinger. Um, before joining the Institute, Kim received a bachelor's and master's in engineering cybernetics from University of Stuttgart in Germany. And he also worked as a research assistant at the machine learning and robotics lab at the University of Stuttgart and at Daimler Autonomous Driving Research Center, both in Germany, in Böblingen and in Sunnyvale in California. Um, his research lies at the interface of safe learning based control and model predictive control. And today he will present some recent results uh, in these areas. And we are all very happy and interested uh, to hearing what, you, what he's going to say. So the, the stage is yours. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot for the uh, for the kind introduction. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about predictive safety filters um, that we're, we've been working on during the past couple of, of months and, and years. Um, so yeah, let's start right into it. Um, as you know, today's control engineering problems, um, they get more and more complex, for example, in case of connected uh, power grids or human and robot interactions where a robot intelligently needs to interact with humans. Um, but also this more and more complex control engineering problems also generate more and more amount of available data that can be used um, in combination with advances in machine learning to automatically design learning-based controllers um, that use or leverage this available data um, in order to increase the closed loop system performance while requiring less expert knowledge for, um, of the control engineer who needs to develop these applications. However, a main limitation of most of these learning based control design procedures um, is the missing. Uh, or, or are missing safety certificates if you apply them in closed loop as depicted, for example, here. What do we mean by safety in terms of dynamical systems? So let me provide you a simple example here with the car. Um, so if you would apply a certain learning-based control input um, at the current time step, you would end up at the next state. And we would say that this learning input at the current time step would be safe if we can find um, what we call a backup trajectory for the dynamical system for all future time steps, which keeps the system safe. And safe in this particular scenario here would be then um, satisfaction of, of the road boundaries or stay within the, the track, basically. So, for example, if the learning based controller, for the sake of exploration, um, would propose the following learning input, which then would yield um, this system state as depicted here. Um, even while this system state would still be safe at the next time step, um, due to physi uh, physical limitations, we would know that at some point in the future, the system will violate our safety constraints. Meaning that this next state would already be an unsafe state. So what we would like to have, ideally, and this will be the, the main point of this talk, um, is a so-called safety filter which sits in between our learning-based controller and our system. And what the safety filter is supposed to do is to take the learning-based control input and the current system state and decide whether it's OK to apply the learning-based control input or if it's necessary to override the input into a safe input for which we can guarantee that this backup trajectory will exist for all future time steps. And this way we will certify um, and provide a modular framework for learning based controllers that provide safety. Uh, let me quickly see why these um, videos are not working. Um, 
Okay, so for some reason the animation seem not to be working. Um, okay, but I, yeah, let me quickly restart maybe PowerPoint because at a later point in the presentation it will be rather crucial that we have the videos running. So apologies for <coughs> um, this quick interruption here. Uh, so now the videos are working again, luckily. Um, okay, so just to connect where we um, stopped the presentation. So we were, um, the last thing that I explained was um, the missing safety certificate um, and then the introduction of the safety filter, which is the main point of this talk. And with this safety filter, what we would like to achieve is the following. So um, a potentially unsafe learning-based controller in closed loop, which could cause constraint violations during learning should be improved by the safety filter to even achieve safe online learning on potentially a real system um, in closed loop. And now the question is, of course, how to get such a safety filter. And in order to do that, in order to obtain such a safety filter, a very basic strategy um, that was introduced in the past is based on a safety controller. Um, such a safety controller can be a very simple controller, which does not have to provide um, a good performance or in closed loop, but we need to know um, that this controller provides safety to our system, at least at, for example, a certain equilibrium point of the system. And the idea is now to combine the safety controller um, together with the proposed learning-based control input with a so-called decision module, which can switch between safety or performance mode. So we have two different um, closed loop signal chains. So either there's the safe signal path, which goes through the safety controller, or the decision module can switch to the learning based controller for increasing the performance if possible. So to exemplify this a little bit, consider the drone here. And let's assume that we're approaching the ground rather fast with a high velocity. So the decision module then needs to decide ahead of time when it's necessary to switch to the safety controller such that we can slow down and avoid a crash into the ground with the quad rotor. Um, so this is basically the requirement. And of course, the question would be now, when do we have to switch between the safety controller and the learning-based controller. And how can we get up with the principled method to define this decision module? And the basic idea I think is rather simple. Um, so given this safety controller, which provides, for example, practical safety, what we can do is um, we would then compute a corresponding forward invariant set of system states, which we also denote safe set in the following. Um, S, which would be defined as a level set of a level set function V of X. And invariance means that under application of the safety controller, if our initial state is contained in the safe set, it will also be contained in the safe set for all future times. Meaning that if the safe set is a subset of our safety constraints, we can directly guarantee safety under application of the safety controller. And now regarding the decision module, if we now assume that our system is a continuous time system, we can come up with a very simple safe control law um, which realizes the decision module. And you would just switch between um, learning and safety controller based on our level set function. So as long as we're inside of our safe forward invariant set, we can apply the learning based controller and as soon as we hit the boundary in the continuous time case, we would switch to the safety controller. And ideally, the safety controller also then drives our system into the interior of our safe set, such that we can then again switch back to our learning-based controller. So this is the 
a very, very basic um, mechanism, which has also been used a lot in literature um, and can be also put in a little bit more um, general theoretical framework. So the components I was just talking about, so the, the safety controller um, together with, with this level set function, which then defines the safe set, can also be formulated in terms of so-called control barrier function, which then also requires that we have a certain contractivity property on the boundary of the safe set. And if this is fulfilled and um, the dynamics is Lipschitz continuous and some other minor assumptions, we can also provide um, another controller that even if we are get pushed outside our safe set, we can additionally stabilize our safe set um, and drive the system back into safety um, with a control law, which would be defined similar um, as a control Lyapunov function, basically. And this computation of, of this level set function, which is also referred to as a control barrier function and the safe set, as mentioned before, is part of, of a huge body of, of literature, um, which we roughly group into three different uh, categories. And the first one would be based on manually constructing these control barrier functions. Um, and of course, this is quite difficult um, and challenging, especially for nonlinear control systems. Um, as you can imagine, it's, it's similar to constructing a control, uh, a control Lyapunov function, basically. So it's possible for certain systems, and if it works out, then um, you can get a very efficient controller. But um, to use it for learning-based control, it's, it's oftentimes difficult, especially if the dynamics are not known exactly. Another branch is based um, on computing the maximum, read, uh, maximum control invariant set um, using optimal control uh, methods, basically which is, however, based on creating the state space and therefore limited to lower um, dimensional systems up to three or four state dimensions. And then the last uh, group of methods is based on convex approximations. This is how we call it, at least. Um, and there, a lot of ideas are centered around um, linearization of, of, the, of a nonlinear system around an equilibrium point, for example. And then you restricting this uh, shape of safe sets to ellipsoidal sets, um, and then computing a certain level which can guarantee safety. So to conclude, either these computations are limited to lower dimensional systems, um, or potentially a bit conservative or difficult to design. We can say that it's in general difficult to compute the safe set and the corresponding safety controller. So. Um, we therefore asked ourselves um, how we can avoid these explicit computations and also reduce um, the knowledge that, uh, for example, a control engineer need to know uh, when he or she wants to apply the safety framework. And our idea is to use more predictive control ideas to enhance um, potentially conservative safe sets. And how does this work? Um, so let's consider a given system state inside our state constraint set and a proposed control learning input. What we now do is we state a modern predictive control problem and require the following. So ideally, we would like to match our first input of a predicted state trajectory to the proposed learning input at the current time step. And then we plan using the system dynamics a trajectory towards a potentially conservative terminal safe set, which needs to be forward invariant. This results in an, in an online problem, which is similar to a model predictive control online, online problem, and provides the following guarantee. So if we now apply, in this case, um, the first element of the computed input sequence, we end up at the next predicted state. And then, because our terminal set is invariant, we can again explicitly construct a feasible solution at this next time step using the previously computed solution by extending the last state using the terminal safety controller corresponding to the terminal safe set. Or what we actually propose to do is to optimize again 
this online um, MPC-like control problem to match the newly proposed uh, learning input if possible again. Um, so in this case, we could again um, drive our objective here to zero and exactly match our first input to the proposed learning input while having this backup trajectory towards the safe terminal set. And as mentioned earlier, we are guaranteed that we can find a solution. So in worst case, we have to take that solution and override the proposed learning input. And for example, if the learning-based controller would propose an unsafe learning uh, input, which would drive our system outside the state constraints, we can still try to match the first input as closely as possible. And thereby we get this filtering property. Um, so in our opinion, this approach has some, some nice advantages. So first of all, we don't need an explicit safe set computation because the safe set is given implicitly through the feasible set of this optimization problem here. Um, we also don't need an explicit safety controller, but we need to solve this optimization problem online. Um, and we also don't need this explicit um, discrete decision module deciding between a safety controller and a performance controller. Um, but we have this filtering property through the objective. And very important, there are efficient solvers available since this problem structure here can be easily be implemented with any available MPC solver. So one thing, I mean, so just implementing this nominal version um, wouldn't be that difficult um, if we would know the model exactly. However, in particular in a learning-based control setup, we don't exactly know our prediction model. So <clears throat> we often need to infer our model from data and thereby we have certain uncertainties which we ideally can incorporate in the new design procedures to get certain theoretical properties in terms of safety. And before I dive a little bit in deeper into that, these methods, let me first answer a question that one could ask who is familiar with MPC. Because there are also some learning-based MPC methods, one could argue, yeah, if we now learn the model, why not just directly use MPC? Meaning that we would replace the filtering objective that I just proposed with an actual objective which we would like to minimize in the learning task. But there are some challenges, especially in the learning-based setup to do this. So first of all, the objective needs to be available. So for example, if a robot needs to interact with a human, it's not so clear always what the objective is. So what does the human, for example, want from a robot? Um, so for example, inverse, model, uh, inverse reinforcement learning addresses exactly this setup. And it would be advantage if we could combine this with this predictive safety filter formulation to learn safely what, for example, a human wants from a robot. And then secondly, the objective always needs to be differentiable because it's part of the online optimization problem, which we could rid of if we only try to match the first input at every time step. And then also, if we don't know the model exactly and we want to do um, exploration, there are so-called dual MPC schemes available. However, often they are difficult to implement and it would be already enough to match, for example, a sinusoidal signal at every time step to identify the underlying dynamics. So this could be easily done. Um, and as a last point, it should be also noted that implementation of this safety mechanism, which only needs to find a backup trajectory, can be achieved with a shorter planning horizon yielding more efficient online computation times um, compared to the case where we try to provide, for example, in autonomous driving, a very comfortable driving experience with a foresightful um, driving strategy or control strategy compared to the case where we only need to provide safety, meaning that we can plan a few steps using maximum deceleration, for example. So implement, the implementation of this predictive safety filter can be done in some cases, uh, more uh, efficient in terms of online computation uh, required. So this is just a few ideas why it could be uh, useful to look into this topic um, and also some additional motivation. 
um, for the upcoming part of the presentation where we look a little bit more closely to specific approaches. So in the, in the past, we've developed quite a few appro different approaches for different types of systems and also different types of prior knowledge of the systems and different um, assumptions on the data that we observe for the system. So here we have different uh, versions for centralized systems, starting with simple linear systems where we assume bounded uncertainties, um, then stochastic systems with parametric uncertainties and unbounded additive uh, process noise um, up to highly nonlinear uncertain systems. And these two we'll also cover in this talk. Um, and then I would also like to mention that together with uh, Simon, we've also developed some distributed approaches um, which can be also completely implemented in a distributed fashion and also the design can be done very efficiently using some recent uh, scenario optimization based approaches. But before we have a closer look at those two specific centralized um, methods, I would like to quickly mention the very basic underlying idea that is used to make um, the predictive safety filter, which is similar to MPC, robust against model uncertainties. Because the, the very basic mechanism is always, I would say, quite similar in, in most of these schemes. So let's assume we have a model given as follows. So we have a nonlinear nominal model part plus some model error. And we assume that the model error is additive and bounded in some domain E which could be, for example, estimated from data. So now the problem, if we want to do the, um, this predictive safety filter or um, also an MPC would be that if we plan a trajectory, even for one time step, could happen that even if a nominal plan is inside our state constraint, which would be in this case here half space, um, the potential errors here indicated by this Minkowski sum um, with the nominal dynamics could be outside of this um, of this one half space here. And the strategy, which is typically uh, employed for achieving robustness, is to plan with nominal states and inputs, which are denoted by Z and V here, that we do the nominal plan in a conservative fashion, meaning that we tighten our uh, state and input constraints conservatively such that potential deviations from our nominal plan are still contained in the original constraints of our system. So we would get different state um, and input constraints for nominal planning um, and would then, as mentioned, tighten state input constraints, but also the terminal constraint. So this is a very basic idea which is used in different forms and we will now develop um, a specific method for the following uh, system setup, which is common in, in uh, data-driven model inference. So we consider this parametric system again with additive uh, disturbances, and we assume that we have access to the distribution of this additive process noise. Um, for example, it could be also Gaussian. So in this case, um, the particular feature is that we can support unbounded additive noise. Um, and we also assume that we are given a distribution on the system parameters, which we don't know exactly beforehand. So this distribution could be inferred, for example, from available data. And our goal is to provide chance constraint satisfaction, meaning that our system states should be contained in a specified um, state constraint set, as well as the input should be uh, contained in a specified input set for all future time steps also potentially for infinite time horizon, we should, we should still have a non-vanishing probability PS such that our system is still safe despite unbounded um, Gaussian process noise in our system. And in order to do that, we make some model assumptions. So we assume in this case that this nonlinear model can be reasonably described by a linear model plus a model error term, which compensates for both. One, the deviation to the nonlinear system model, and second, 
the uncertainty with respect to our parameters. So we assume that this model error term is bounded within a known model error set W with a probability level P theta. Um, for all possible states and inputs in the state and input space, meaning that we implicitly also assume that we have bounded state and input space here. So this would be our model. And then we also have, of course, the um, additive noise. So if you would directly put this into a um, model predictive control-like problem, um, we would still minimize the deviation of our input, then we would get our prediction. However, this prediction would be now be also a random variable <clears throat> because we have these random variables here contributing. And then we would need to have um, the desired chance constraint satisfaction, but not only along the prediction horizon, but conditioned on the first system state for all future time steps. So basically what we would need to do is to enforce the chance constraints by an open loop planning problem for the closed loop system, which makes it a little bit tricky. Um, so in the following, I'll show you a technique how we can actually achieve this um, rather nicely. And the approach, again, is at its core based on the tightening of the state and input constraint. And in this particular case, what we are looking at are so-called probabilistic reachable sets, which describe all um, potential system trajectories at a specific time step with a spe specified probability level. So a little bit more formally, um, we now consider a nominal version of our system model, which is then only the linear part of our system estimate. <clears throat> and then what we later apply to our real system is not only the nominal computed input sequence, from our online problem, but an additional tracking term, such meaning that we, we plan a nominal trajectory, we, we don't just let our real system evolve arbitrarily, but we additionally employ a tracking controller which keeps the real system close to our nominally planned state trajectory set of K. So this would be a stabilizing K. And if you now uh, compute the difference between um, X of K and set of K, we get the following error system. So we have this linear closed loop error dynamics with the auxiliary uh, controller plus the model error, uh, model error term and plus the unbounded process noise. And as mentioned earlier, we assume that we know a set for the model error term. And we additionally know the set at the specified probability level. And we also, as mentioned earlier, assume that we know the distribution of this process noise. And now the strategy in order to characterize where the error system um, could lie along our predicted uh, nominal state trajectories, we will split the error into a um, model error part and into a stochastic error part which can be done because the system or the nominal system is linear. And then for the model error dynamics, we can perform a robust treatment starting off with the set W. So what we will do is we will just compute the robust positive invariant set for the model error um, E theta, meaning that if we are contained inside this robust positive invariant set, then we will be contained inside the set for all future time steps. So this is a robust treatment, assuming that the errors will always lie inside the set W. And if you know that W characterize all the model errors with a specified probability level, we can conclude that the computed robust positive invariant set will be robust positive invariant at the same probability level. And this is an immediate result. And this way we will handle, or we will characterize the deviation um, caused by model errors from our nominal system. And now for the stochastic part, it gets a little bit more complicated because we have this unbounded support, so we can't do a robust treatment. Otherwise, um, the set will get arbitrarily large at some time instance. 
because it could be unbounded. So what we will do is we look at the potential error evolutions of the stochastic error. And at each time step, what we can do is we can de define some sort of confidence set or more precisely probabilistic reachable set that contains all possible error evolutions at the desired prob probability level. And we can do this for all time steps and also for the time step k going to infinity. Um, and then we'll obtain a static probabilistic reachable set, which is valid for all time steps. And it actually turns out that if we now take the Minkowski sum of these two error sets that describe the two different errors, we get an overall probabilistic reachable set at the combined probability level, which we can now use in the next step to define the constraint tightening of our, MP, uh, of our predictive safety filter problem. So as mentioned, we now use this reachable set for the states and then by propagating it through the um, feedback matrix, we can also obtain for our um, input space, still trying to minimize deviation from our proposed learning based input. But now with respect to the nominal input plus this auxiliary feedback term, which we need to apply to obtain this closed loop error distribution. Um, but there's still one issue, namely that if we now initialize our first nominal uh, state of our nominal predicted uh, system trajectory to our measured state, we get problems in closed loop because at the non-vanishing probability, we will always get an arbitrarily large process noise signal at each time step. So at some time step, we will encounter a state which will be outside of our tightened state constraint set, for example, as depicted here. And the question now is how can we deal with that? Because obviously if we just initialize it like this, this constraint here would be infeasible. And in order to do that, what we propose is to simply initialize our current nominal system state with the first predicted system state of the solution from the last time step of the predictive safety filter problem. And note that we get still feedback from our real system through this auxiliary um, tracking controller here, and we try to minimize the deviation to nominal inputs. And at the same time, we can still optimize our over our first um, control input of the predicted input trajectory and try to match these two inputs. And especially by this um, mechanism here for our first a nominal state trajectory, we can easily ensure recursive feasibility as in the nominal case that I introduced at the beginning of the presentation. But we can also show that we will satisfy state and input constraints with the specified probability level using this approach for computing these reachable sets. And this we call indirect feedback method. Um, because the feedback only enters in, indirect here in this part. And it should be also noted that the same mechanism can of course also be used um, in a stochastic MPC setup, where then the feedback would enter through the objective function directly. So now as we've covered this part where the system can be approximately described using this nominal linear part, of course, there will be also systems where this assumption is too restrictive, especially if we have uh, highly nonlinear systems. Um, we won't get very far with this linear system assumption here because um, if we then would um, approximate our system with this linear approximation, we would get very large uh, model errors only because of this um, error between the linear and the true nonlinear system. So this this global worst case model error would be very conservative in this case. And therefore I would now also like to outline a nonlinear method 
Um, I won't go into that much detail as in the previous one, but just to, to give you an idea um, what the setup is and what the assumptions are, and that it's actually not that difficult to implement in the end. So we go from this linear approximated system to a fully nonlinear system model, where we now assume that um, the system model um, contains unknown parameters theta. And we also implicitly assume that this system description or the parametrization F is rich enough to truly describe the underlying um, system dynamics. And the idea now is that we assume that we have a prior distribution of the parameters theta, and then combined with some system measurements that we can compute the posterior distribution of our system parameters. And if you now propagate this posterior distribution through our parametric model, what we can get is a distribution of one-step predictions that we will now use in this nonlinear scheme. And before I present you the very basic mechanism that allows you to, to uh, design a computationally feasible nonlinear safety filter, let's do a very simple observation first. So if you have a very, very basic parametric model here, a scalar linear model, so we have um, the state x and we have the unknown parameter theta. And let's now just imagine different realizations of our parameter here. Um, so for example, one parameter looks like this, so we get a slope like that. Um, and then the other parameter, we could get different slopes basically. And the main insight now is if we now look at certain locations in the state space, in this case, in the linear case, um, if we don't have here an offset term, close to the origin, we would have relatively low prediction uncertainty with a fixed uncertainty in our parameter. But far away from the origin, this uncertainty would get larger, so we would have a large prediction uncertainty. And in our previous method, we would now, if, if the state space would be bounded um, on, the, on the end of the axis here, we would need to take this worst case uh, high prediction uncertainty for setting up the model error. But the idea, therefore, is to restrict predictions to subsets where we are sufficiently confident. And therefore, reducing the worst case model error that we need to consider. So in a two-dimensional case, um, you could get the following picture here. So white areas are uncertain areas, and then darker areas are more certain areas. Um, so if you are in a high uncertainty area, we don't really know where we would end up at the next time step. However, if you are in a more certain area, we could pretty pretty well predict our uh, system evolution. So the idea now is to restrict planning to subsets of our state and input constraint set, which are sufficiently confident. So where this one step ahead prediction um, has only a predefined maximum magnitude of errors. And to formalize this a little bit, if we consider we have parametric uncertainties, we define a set C, which is a confidence set for our parameters. So a set that defines um, all possible parameters at a pre-specified probability level PS, which will later also correspond to the probability level of state and input constraint satisfaction. And if we now take this probability um, confidence level set of the parameters and propagate it through our uh, parametric um, system model, um, F of X, U, and theta, and if we then also take the deviation from a nominal parameter, then what we will get is uh, what we call confidence map, meaning that it describes the potential deviation from a nominal predicted point in one time step from the true underlying system due to parametric uncertainties. So if you take the nominal prediction, um, picking a nominal parameter, for example, the maximum a posteriori estimate, um, and the Minkowski sum of this confidence map, we would ex exactly get these uh, ellipsoidal shapes here. And now the idea to define this 
uh, subsets with sufficient confidence would be to impose that the um, potential error in the one step ahead predictions is a subset of a pre-specified model error set. And by doing so, we're avoiding that we would need to explicitly define um, this confident subset for the whole input and state space before actual implementation, which would then mean basically that we would need, for example, to crit the whole state and input space. But by, def by defining this map as a function, we can constrain or we can come up with a constraint to our online planning problem, which then imposes this constraint already in the, in the online MPC problem formulations. And in particular, um, if we do it, for example, using Bayesian regression, um, linear regression with nonlinear features and normal distributions, we uh, could implement this rather difficult looking constraint here, a subset constraint, um, as a set of uh, nonlinear inequalities, which then also, for example, in, in linear um, features would then even get a convex constraint, just as a, as a remark here. And to be a little bit more formal, um, as I explained before, what this basically means, staying in this confident uh, regions of the state and input constraint set and enforcing that we are inside um, this maximum allowable error set is that the analysis and the, the guarantees that we need to provide in, uh, in our closed loop analysis are only with respect to a very standardized model, which has been considered in various different robust MPC approaches already, and which we can directly use. So we reduce the analysis to a nominal nonlinear system part plus a bounded model error part with a bounded model error set, which corresponds to the model error inside this confident subsets because of this additional constraint. So we can basically use um, any robust nonlinear MPC concept. And I will quickly um, just show you a very simple one, um, which can be actually proven to, to also work on the certain assumptions. Um, so what we do in order to do this, this constraint tightening in the online problem to provide the level of cautiousness needed in relation to our uncertainty is a simple scalar uh, scale, uh, a simple linear scaling using a scalar um, quantity along the prediction horizon, which can be easily computed like this with two parameters, epsilon and rho. And it will yield a state constraint tightening as depicted here along the prediction horizon. It will be a convergent sequence. Um, and it's very easy to implement. And in particular, also this uh, set build confidence map constraint here will be also just a scaled version. And as it turns out, if we, if we use this approach, we can actually provide very strong theoretical guarantees um, that also yield a very simple to implement design procedure, even for nonlinear systems with data-driven estimates of our uh, system dynamics. And the idea is now the following in the first step for this tightening sequence, uh, we need to pick a parameter row. And if you don't know exactly the, the theoretical role of this parameter, we can just pick it conservatively, meaning close to one and a corresponding constraint tightening. So the epsilon of this uh, sequence here, greater than zero, such that the last predicted state and input constraints are still non-empty sets. And then in the next step, what we need to define is a maximum tolerated local model uncertainty in the confident subset, uh, uh, which results from this confident subset constraint. And the simple, simplest case can just look at um, your inferred model uncertainty at different points of your state space that are important for, for the given task. And then define, for example, a ball with a certain radius which then defines the set E. And it can be shown that if the system is stabilizable, 
and um, you have enough information about the system, then you can scale down um, the confidence subset of your stand in, uh, of your stand instance space through this implicit um, confidence subset constraint using the maximum allowable model error set E, using, for example, Monte Carlo simulation, and you will be guaranteed to find a feasible solution. And it's very important to note here that we basically only need to pick a very few numbers of crucial parameters, um, which we can even pick conservatively as a first step. And then only we need to pick the E and a corresponding scaling, and we're guaranteed to find a feasible solution. Um, and if you're not, if we won't find a feasible solution, then either the system is not stabilizable or we need to collect more data um, around our uh, initial uh, system state or we need to lower the uh, desired probability level of chance constraint satisfaction in closed loop. In order to demonstrate this a little bit, we will start with a very simple example namely a uh, swing up of, an, of, a, of a pendulum. So, and here in this example, what we can do, for example, is to define as the safe set, the downward position with zero velocity, for which a safety controller would just be zero applied torque to the system. And the uh, reinforcement learning task here would be to find a controller that swings up the pendulum uh, to this target position here, the upward inverted pendulum position. However, the swing up needs to be done safely in terms of a safety constraint, which is exactly at the upward position. So no overshoots are allowed. And you only have very little prior knowledge about the system dynamics. So now I will um, visualize the training process here where we simultaneously update the model of the predictive safety filter. Um, and the safety filter is implemented using this nonlinear method that I just described. Um, and what you will see here in those plots is here the model uncertainty in the top left, um, the shape of the estimated system dynamics, and we will see that this changes quite uh, dramatically. And then the proposed learning input and the applied input, system state evolution and animation of the system. So if the learning process in closed loop starts, we also begin to collect uh, data in closed loop. And you can see here the computed backup trajectory and black, to, uh, black and red dots here. And as more data is collected, we can allow the system to explore more and more of the state and input space, which will then also finally allow the system to um, do a successful swing up operation. And also the proposed learning input is only overwritten if necessary. As a next example with a little bit higher dimensional states and inputs, we consider um, a very common goal, namely to find uh, PD controller parameters of a quadrotor drone um, to achieve a certain target position. Um, so without a safety framework, we would um, had a lot of, of ground crashes if we would apply the policy in closed loop. Um, so the idea is that during tuning, we employ um, learning of these parameters, of the control parameters, in combination with a safety filter where the safe terminal set is defined as a sufficiently alt sufficient high altitude um, in combination with um, an LQR controller which can stabilize the quad rotor around um, this safe altitude position. And you will now see um, in an animation the activity level of the safety filter um, with this, uh, with the same policy that I've shown before, which uh, yield the crown crash, you can see that um, by overriding the safety filter if necessary, we can um, achieve a safe closed loop learning um, of this PD control parameters. So if you would run this experiment uh, several times, um, we would get in simulation without the safety framework these red trajectories where we have uh, quite a lot of uh, safety constraint violations. So each uh, dot here indicates a ground crash, different angles of the quad rotor, and the blue trajectories uh, correspond to training episodes with the safety framework where we have no 
not a single uh, found content in the end. And the learning of these control parameters in this particular example was performed using Bayesian optimization. So as a last example, uh, I want to show you some recent results that we obtained together with uh, Ben and, and Andrea from our crew. Um, and the example here is based uh, on this racetrack. And as a first experiment, what we use this uh, a human as a learning based control input. So since the, the framework is, is very modular by only requiring a learning based control input, we can also even combine it with, with humans. So in this case, the goal would be to um, try to learn to steer the track, uh, the, the car around the track, which is quite difficult with this uh, small race cars here. Um, and you will see in the beginning, he is driving very cautiously and the steering commands are uh, almost directly passed through the system unfiltered. And then he will do some unreasonable steering comments and the safety framework will intervene a lot more. So you can see now um, with arbitrary inputs, we can still obtain safety um, with, the, with the safety framework. And now without any control input, um, the car or the, the safety filter will still intervene if necessary before crashing into a boundary. We also combined um, this, of course, with a learning-based policy. Um, and here the goal was to learn from an expert. So we have um, an export controller, which is actually quite uh, computationally intense to run online on the system. So the idea was to use um, an, a neural net to approximate this um, almost optimal control policy um, and basically compile this uh, expert policy into this neural net. Um, in order to do that safely, we use uh, the safety framework. So what you can see now are the training episodes um, where we have quite uh, some uh, safety interventions during the training. And we then also see that uh, even for, the, for this expert policy, we can almost um, pass through most of the proposed control inputs, which are very aggressive maneuvers. Now we, can, now we use the same learned policy from the previous training um, on a different track, and in order to apply that safely, we also mind with this uh, predictive safety filter and can provide a decent control performance despite the imitation learning was based on a completely different race track. So, to wrap up, um, what I presented to you was a method to um, online compute backup controllers for providing safety certified learning based control policies. And the basic idea was to um, provide an implicit safe set and controller representation to um, avoid the explicit computation. And um, this was basically done using MPC uh, methods and ideas. But in addition, we also provide um, design procedures that focus on the problem of having some prior knowledge about the system and different assumptions um, about available system data, which can be then combined together in a design procedure to provide uh, these predictive safety filters with um, strong theoretical guarantees in terms of closed loop uh, input and state constraint satisfaction. Um, and yeah, so the main features are scalability to larger scale systems and also that can get less conservative by collecting more data during closed loop. Um, and as mentioned earlier, it's simple to implement because you can just use any available uh, model predictive control tool. Yeah, so with that, I'm at the end of my presentation and uh, thanks a lot for uh, listening. Thank you, Kim, for the talk. Um, great talk. So do we have any questions from the audience? Uh, I have a question um, regarding the uh, so 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 basically we are trying to use an uh, MPC based uh, method to restrict the behavior so to restrict the 
uh, training process of the learning based controller, right? Yeah. And do you, with this method, do you have any metric to quantify how, cons uh, how conservative? Uh, how conservative is the is this framework restricting the behavior of the learning based controller? Because in fact, if you want to use a learning based controller, we want to use this controller as much as possible. Yes, yeah. and using that method, we can guarantee that it is safety, but performance and safety, you this mm -hmm. is the things that you always need to compromise with each other. So if yeah. you, if I restrict the system too much, it's for sure safe, but then the learning based controller. Yep. have little chance to be applied. Yep. So, so a very critical problem is that, so we, we, we need a matrix to quantify this compromise. So how does it, how does it look like here? Okay, so um, I think there are different aspects that need to be considered. So one aspect is of course, how well we know the system model. Um, but if you would, for the sake of simplicity, assume that we know the model exactly, you still have the issue that, of course, depending on the length of the planning horizon of the model predictive controller, the safe set will get more or less conservative. So as you mentioned, if you take, for example, an equilibrium state as the terminal safe set, and we only have one um, planning horizon with our N MPC uh, like problem online, then we would obtain safety, but our system would stay at the equilibrium point all the time. Um, so this is the one extreme and the other extreme would be a planning horizon going to infinity that we would then approach the maximum control invariant set with the with this online MPC problem, um, which provide all possible closed loop trajectories, um, which would be also safe for the system. Um, so this is at least a practical guideline. So in, in, if you tune and, and you figure out, okay, the safety filter is too conservative. You can always increase the planning horizon if possible to make it less conservative or try to enlarge the terminal set constraint. Um, mm -hmm. On a more general note, it's a little bit more difficult to quantify um, the feasible set. So if you have um, a system where you can compute a so-called explicit solution to the online MPC-like problem, you could also, for example, visualize the resulting feasible set of this problem, and then you would get a little bit more insight. Um, mm -hmm. But especially the combination of the safety framework um, with learning-based controllers, and then also the convergence guarantees are part of ongoing research in our group. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you. Any other question? All right, then uh, thank you very much for, for your talk. I think you gave your coordinates if people want to reach out. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, yeah, thanks again for the opportunity. And of course, feel free to write me an email if you're interested or have any questions, we can of course chat. Thank you very much, Kim, and uh, thank you all thank for you, participating. Kim. See you all uh, next week with the next talk. Bye-bye.